Hello, every folks, and good morning. Okay, so I'm glad to say that uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of news to report on, um, and I will say some of this stuff was apparently figured out a decent bit earlier. I just kind of uh, didn't catch it, so my bad on that one. But um, yeah, there's a lot of information as far as the uh, damage calculations go, as far as what's affecting what, as well as new things to keep in mind when making your builds. Uh, so first of all, um, just answer one thing that came up quite a bit last time. Yes, I definitely did make a mistake when I was talking earlier as far as the whole resistance thing goes for some reason I always have this thing in my head of like you remember that one vest in uh, tactics ogre PSP where you have the uh, the lightning vest that says that it gives you earth resistance mentally I constantly just have that stuck in my head so I'm thinking like oh it's water it's gonna be resisting fire whereas in order to like uh, that is to say water would be resisting its weakness which would uh, necessarily be uh, lightning in this uh, in this case, yes, obviously water would make sense for dowsing fire, using the earth to uh, get rid of lightning, and using the fire to get rid of ice makes a decent bit more sense than, you know, the other crap that I was uh, throwing out there. So, either way, you know, same general idea, bunch of different elements resist a bunch of different things, you know, the elemental Valkyrie, good stuff. But uh, there's actually quite a bit of uh, other information that uh, came in uh, from, uh, from these uh, amazing folks uh, that did this damage calculation here. Um, um, uh, specifically, uh, Rue Session was the one that uh, was posting most of it on, on here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Shin was the one that uh, directed me towards this calculator in the first place, or calculation in the first place. Um, apparently, this is from like nine days ago, so I apologize for missing it. Um, and apparently, it was uh, Asphal and uh, Sapphire Dragon Zero that originally, uh, or actually, no, Asphal did the data mining, and then Rue Session and Sapphire Zero were the ones that, uh, that figured out all of this stuff. So. Um, th this is the, um, it kind of like a fix of the original version that was like in Japanese or Chinese or something. Um, I have it up in the other thing here and Google Translate refuses to even try to translate that. So either way, bunch of cool things though. First of all, um, this one actually isn't going to be covered in the document and still does actually change element. I was wrong about that one entirely. So apparently, um, based on certain criteria as far as uh, what's strong or weak, uh, you can actually get your uh, bonus on this stuff up to, I think it was like 31 point something percent, um, wherein uh, th basically one half of that percentage is if you are personally good with that element, uh, then you get a, a bonus for using it, and additionally if your weapon is also good against it, uh, you, uh, you also get a bonus, and apparently if, uh, uh, if the other person's weak to it, uh, then you also get that bonus, but it's very minuscule, it's like a few percentage points. That's why I always kind of figured it was maybe just, uh, you know, RNG on the numbers going up or down slightly. It turns out, no, it actually is consistently a few percentage points higher. Um, and it turns out that, uh, yeah, it does actually have an effect. And it actually does explain a few things, like, for example, the uh, the switch bow uh, user uh, in um, uh, in the Nothing Burger run as far as why she was wrecking so hard with her uh, friggin' water bow. Um, anyway, so let's um, let's get onto this document here, because this is what we came here for. Um, okay, so... Again, uh, you know, thanks to uh, Recession, Sapphire Dragoon, Asphal, and uh, Shin for uh, uh, for all various uh, uh, contributions here, as well as uh, Charles Satin for uh, uh, for writing all of this up. I believe they did the translation or some such. I'm not sure exactly who did what. Look, long story short, y'all are freaking heroes. Let's move on with this thing. Um, okay, so here's what we uh, what we can learn from all of this. So there's going to be several different breakdowns of all of this stuff um, as we move along. It basically just keeps breaking it down in simpler and more complicated uh, versions. I'll go ahead and include the, uh, the link in the video just so you can go give this a bit of a look yourself. But it starts off with uh, the damage being essentially uh, attacker and defender base stats going against each other and then the equipment going against each other. Any time that, uh, that you see a, uh, uh, a bolded section in this, uh, that means it's stat overhead, which basically means that that's uh, the stuff that's going to be affected by scaling. The more complex version of this, where it expands it a little bit more, is essentially the attacker's strength, dexterity, or intelligence, and mind. Uh, going against the defender's uh, strength and vit and uh, mind and resistance, so that part was the same. Um, and then expanded to the attacker uh, uh, or the uh, weapons attack score versus the uh, equipment's uh, defense score. Now, that's just a slightly expanded version of the previous one, but then it gets to the full thing down here, uh, wherein effectively it's um, 100 plus any affinity adjustments, plus elemental adjustments, plus the attack modifiers, minus uh, any resistance modifiers um, as a percentage, and then that going against the, the attacker's uh, uh, attributes, uh, going against their uh, attribute values. 
and then their action values, which is basically like an attached score for every action that you take, um, plus their equipment score, uh, then multiplied by any uh, elemental compatibility adjustments, and then minus any defender's equipment values. So armor is still on the very end there in terms of um, overall damage threshold, um, but yeah, all the other stuff is um, has seemingly moved around very slightly. It's not it's not exactly as as different as you'd expect, but it is closer to the uh, PSP version than I was kind of starting to feel there. Anyway, um, so there's uh, what they're calling the affinity as well as um, a compatibility uh, score here. So basically, um, if you have somebody that's uh, affiliated with their uh, uh, with their particular thing, um, they can either get a 30% bonus for having the correct affinity or a 10% uh, penalty uh, if they have the wrong affinity in a particular situation. Um, and then when it comes to the uh, compatibility for something, it's the other way around where they can either get a 10% bonus or a 30% uh, penalty. Uh, so like, for example, this is one of those cases where if you're using the same element, you get a 10% bonus, or if you're using an off element uh, that uh, you're uh, that you're weak against, then you get a, a negative 30%. Um, whereas if you're using a spell, uh, you get a plus 30% bonus if it's the if you're matching the uh, spells element um, or affinity rather, and then get a 10% penalty if you're using the wrong one. So, moving on here, um, breakdown of some of the other things here. So, a weapon's uh, damage type bonus uh, applies to the uh, the first uh, uh, modification phase. The uh, the elemental type bonus uh, would apply um, it would apply their modifier if uh, they are um, uh, if they're strong against that particular affinity. Um, basically, that's that's what I was noticing the other day, um, which. This definitely uh, words it a lot more accurately than I did. Uh, but anyway, if they're weak to it, uh, they end up taking extra damage, but only in that particular case. Uh, weapons racial bonus applies if, um, uh, obviously, if they're that particular race type, and if it's not uh, completely uh, wiped out by uh, defend, uh, def the uh, defender's resistance modifiers. And as far as equipment values... Uh, it says that uh, the uh, defender would also apply their innate defense value, which is determined by their class and level. Uh, so this is technically also true in PSP, but I'm not sure to what degree this currently calculates. Because like in the PSP version, it was pretty minor. Like uh, in the case of the knight, I think they had like 12 built-in defense. It was like 8 to 12 or something like that. Um, it didn't really max out terribly high. Um, and then, based on the level, it went up very slightly. Um, I'd assume it's dramatically more in this version. I actually did not see that in this particular guide. Um, anyway, so, first, kind of going down the list of different affinities and elements here. So, the first thing to get modified is affinity. Uh, that's determined by the character's element. If the attacker's element is strong against the defender's element, they gain a 1.3 modifier to the stat overhead. So basically, they're getting a 30% bonus to their initial phase calculations there. If the attacker's element is weak against the defender's element, they get an 0 0.9 modifier penalty to the stat overhead. Um, elemental compatibility. Uh, the elemental compatibility is the term that we'll use to check whether the action, basic attack, finisher spell, matches the character's affinity. This will provide either a multiplier bonus or a multiplier penalty to the uh, attacker's weapon attack. Um, the various actions... So... You know, exactly like uh, they said there. I'm going to try not to just read a lot of this verbatim. Uh, there is a particular spot I'm trying to find here. Uh, this was one of them here. So basic attack elemental compatibility. If the attacker's weapon element matches the attacker's affinity, apply a 1.1 multiplier to the attacker's weapon attack. For example, if both the weapon and the character are fire, the weapon's attack value is 100, uh, is 100 then they apply a 1.1 multiplier for a total of 110. If the attacker's uh, weapon element is strong against the attacker's affinity, apply uh, an 0.7 multiplier to the attacker's weapon attack. So, for example, if the weapon is water and the character is fire, the weapon's attack value drops down to 70. So, uh, finishers also uh, work a little bit differently here. So, if the attacker's finisher element is strong against the defender's affinity, apply a 100% damage modifier to the stat overhead. This is not applicable to the Dark Knight unique finishers, uh, such as Ozma's Demon Rose. So, for example, if the finisher is fire, the defender is ice, the stat overhead would increase by 100%. Um, and also, this is more than likely... It, the reason that the Dark Knight finishers are exempt uh, was more than likely to avoid situations of them actually one-shotting people, um, in case is where they weren't meant to. So if the attacker's finisher element matches the attacker's affinity, apply a 1.1 multiplier, so again, 10% stronger on the finisher side, um, and same old uh, either plus 10 or minus 30 uh, kind of rules on that one. 
Um, spells are going to uh, work a little bit differently, though. It actually isn't 30%, so I was wrong in that one. If the spell's element is strong against the defender's affinity, apply the weapon's elemental damage, uh, regardless if it matches the spell's element or not, as a percentage modifier to the stat overhead. For example, if the defender is ice and the spell used is fire and the weapon has an elemental value of 20, regardless if it's ice or some other element, stat overhead would increase by 20%. If the attacker's spell element matches the attacker's affinity, apply a 1.4 multiplier to the spell's action value. For example, if both the spell and the character are fire and the action value of the spell is 25, apply a 1.4 multiplier to 25 for a total of 35. Um, but this is one of the two factors that's currently bugged, so currently spellcasters don't get to apply any bonuses, including elemental uh, damage bonuses from their weapon if they are either wielding a two-handed weapon or wielding a one-handed weapon and nothing in the offhand. This is circumvented by having another item such as shields equipped on the offhand. Uh, bonuses on the offhand will not apply. Uh, for RT saving and uh, AI team purposes, consider using a generic curse dagger, uh, i.e. no uh, unit sacrifice to modify the weapon on the offhand. Um, personally, I prefer using a Caldia, but e either one works, to be honest. Um, mostly just because uh, Caldia has that extra charm on there, so you could always have a chance to uh, go and uh, mind control somebody. But, uh, that being said, um, as far as the bonus, so... This is one that I tried to recreate, um, just uh, kind of leading up to this. I, I was trying for like an hour to recreate a few di of these different scenarios. Supposedly, and I'm hoping somebody can clarify this uh, for me here, supposedly this is meaning that you're getting more or less better penetration for spells if you're using a, um, if, essentially if you're using a weapon that is the same as uh, the character that's doing it. So, like it says here, if the attacker's spell element matches uh, the attacker's affinity, they get a 1.4 multiplier. Um, if the... It, or actually, no, it's not mentioning the weapon here. Where was it here? Um, if the attacker's spell element is strong, yada yada. Um, if both the spell and the character are fire, the action value of the spell is 25. Apply one... So you get the 1.4 multiplier. Where was the bit about the weapons? Uh, here it is. Okay, so... Um, apply the weapon's elemental damage. So... Like, if the spell's element is strong against the defender's affinity, th apply the weapon's elemental damage. Now, this basically means that the stats should, according to this, be doing something. Now, I was going and I was uh, testing this a little bit, um, uh, swapping out, uh, uh, going and uh, swapping out my um, uh, my stabs on uh, on my different units here. Um, I wasn't necessarily seeing this, but also at the same time, I'm not 100% certain that that's necessarily what's going on there. So, like, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, in this particular case, uh, if she were to use a water spell, it would also be increasing by, I guess, 23% based on this weapon's affinity. I mean, it might potentially explain why the hell Valkyries hit so dang hard sometimes, but, like, is, is that accurate or not? I, I, I don't know if I'm misunderstanding something like that properly, because I know I was going and swapping out staves on sh uh, Sherry over here, um, and I wasn't actually necessarily seeing that much of a difference here. So let's go ahead and test it again. So 102, currently uh, she is unmodified in any way, going against a neutral element. Um, at the same time, she's um, uh, she's using an earth staff, so we'll go ahead and uh, swap this out real quick. By the way, the reason that I'm testing with these two in particular is there's, there's one really cool bit later in here that I never, ever, ever would have expected. Um, and to my knowledge... Um, uh, might not have actually been in the PSP version, though I'm not really sure. Um, and that's when we get to the uh, the Apocrypha later. So either way, we saw a 102 there. We switch out for, let's say, a Wand of Air. The, this should dramatically change the uh, the numbers, as, you know, if that part was correct. Um, actually, I should probably take Nature's Touch off her so that she's not accidentally rolling that and screwing up this test. Um, so we'll take that off real quick. Um... So either way, if maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but that's to me that's seeming like what they're implying there. That uh, this should be doing uh, five percent extra damage based off uh, having that particular staff on hand. Um, obviously, we're gonna have to wait a turn for meditate to trigger. Yes, I can use the staff. Yes, I won't use the staff. But let's go ahead and test this real quick uh, to see if it really is the case, because that'd be really cool if it was. Uh, when I was testing it earlier, it didn't seem to want to apply. So uh, either way. And uh, for the sake of uh, comparison, um, 
boosted. Uh, she's doing 123 with Undine 2. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see if that uh, changes any. Well, actually, there's I don't have an equivalent weapon to change her into, so never mind on that. But as you can see right here, I'm not like, even switching out her staff here. I'm not actually seeing a difference um, as far as this goes. So maybe there's something mistranslated there. Maybe there's something misapplied. I don't know, but I'm not seeing that 5% bonus. If I'm misunderstanding something, please let me know. Um, again, I, I'm trying my best here. I'm not good at math. That part's been very clear up to this point. <laughs> this stuff confuses the hell out of me. Anyway, moving on because I, I want to... I want to show something really cool uh, that uh, happens later in this. Okay, so uh, moving on here. So known bugs, yeah, if you have a two-handed weapon or if you have a uh, one-handed weapon um, and you don't have anything in your offhand for some reason, uh, then uh, they don't get uh, any bonuses for absolutely bizarre reasons. It is possible that they're talking about spell bonuses in particular, not necessarily the weapon bonuses. Again, if I'm misunderstanding that, please do clarify. Okay. So, Elemental Resistances. So, Elemental Resistances apply their bonuses as a percentage modifier to the stat overhead in the following affinity scenarios that we know of. Uh, if the attacker's action element is uh, strong against the defender's affinity, the defender's elemental resistance uh, that will apply is the element that is strong against the former's element, i.e. it will check the defender's equipment for which, equi uh, which element to best use. This cannot reduce the attacker's modifier bonus to below zero, i.e. if the elemental resistance is greater than, or, uh, yeah, is greater than the damage bonus, this will reduce the bonus to zero. If the attacker's action element is weak against uh, the uh, uh, defender's affinity, the defender's elemental resistance uh, that will apply in the element uh, matches the defender's affinity. All right, let's move on quickly to uh, to basic weapon attacks. Um, it has more on spells in a moment. So below is a breakdown of the stat modifiers that uh, uh, to use in our damage formula. Uh, the equipment multiplier would apply to the non-bolded part, so the equation would look something like this. Damage equals attacker's strength and dex, uh, minus the uh, defender's strength and vitality, um, plus the attacker's weapon and attack uh, times its equipment multiplier, minus the defender's uh, uh, defense and equipment uh, multiplier. A concrete example for daggers in this case would be the uh, would be 1.5 uh, strength uh, plus 1.6 dex uh, modifiers, uh, minus 1.0 strength and 1.0 vit on the defender side, um, times the attacker's weapon attack uh, uh, times 1.2, and then the, the defender's equipment uh, 1.0. Uh, for bows, the formula would be, and why it deals less damage to heavily armored units despite uh, characters having relatively good stats, is something like this. So, uh, attacker's 1.3 strength, uh, plus 1.7 dex, uh, minus the defender's 0.7 strength, um, uh, plus uh, 1.0 vit, so vit is defending better than uh, strength in this particular case. Um, but they multiply their weapon's attack value by 2.5, minus the defender's equipment multiplied by 2.5. If this sounds familiar to anyone that's played New Vegas, this is this is why I said the, that uh, archers are basically hollow point rounds. This is exactly how they did it. Um, that they give you a big damage multiplier and then they also multiply the, uh, uh, the enemy unit's defense. So if you find a way past that defense, your damage goes insane, but if you, uh, if you try to just, you know, uh, completely, uh, you know, plink against a wall, you're gonna have a bad time. Now, this proceeds to break down all of these different uh, types. Apparently, the Boreas, for whatever reason, has its own section, which is kind of weird. What, what's that about? Um, I guess all the other one-handed axes are 1.8 strength, uh, 1.3 dex. The Boreas gets an extra 0.1 or 0 .1 dex. <laughs> That's weirdly specific, but again, Mitsuno game's gonna Mitsuno game. Um, what else? Uh, shields scale the same way as swords, axes, hammers, spellbooks, and musical instruments. Um, fists, two-handed swords, two-handed axes, spears, two-handed uh, hammers, two HKs, uh, whips, spellbooks, musical instruments, the Boreas, the Cursed Cudgel, and uh, the Cleric Cudgel. Apparently Cleric Cudgel scale different? What the hell? Uh, so apparently clerics get better cudgel damage. That actually does explain some things, though it also adds even more questions. Anyway, um, so apparently uh, clerics uh, scale cudgels better. Um, daggers and 1HKs are 1.5 strength, 1.6 dex. Uh, regular cudgels for everybody else are 1.0 strength and 0.6 dex. Uh, actually, in the background, I oh, man, I gotta, I gotta see this cudgel thing real quick. I never, like, I never even 
looked back into it. Let's, uh, let's do that. So, for anyone curious, yeah, obviously still doing one damage. Let's, um, let's check real quick. Is it, is it that big of a difference, uh, for modifiers? Like, are, are, when they say Cleric Cudgel, do they mean the Staff of Purification, or do they mean something else? Because in that case, um, where's my Cleric at? In that case, uh, Jennifer here should be, should be friggin' destroying with this mace. Um, where's, th those are hammers. How are hammers and cudgels different? Don't question it. Um, actually, wait a minute, that has a one attack value. What, what's the best attack value we can get out of this? I mean, I guess the armor stick. Uh, although, I mean, cursed cudgel's already in use. Two tests, then. Okay, so I'm gonna assume it's a, some kind of mistranslation or something, because kind of, uh, looking into it here. Um, if we're going for, for a heavy staff in his hand, even with matching element, even going in against weakness, I'm not really seeing anything here. Um, if we're seeing the other cleric going against him, maybe we'll see something, and that's still no. So the cursed one definitely does scale different. Um, is this maybe just for finishers? Is that... Let me double check here. No, this is just basic attacks. So I'm not sure exactly how accurate that is. Like, maybe, again... Cleric Cudgel, maybe that means something else. Um, it is certainly possible. Um, either way, hopefully you uh, can get some clarification on that. Um, let's move on, though. Uh, we've uh, spent too long in this particular thing. Um, but basically, yes, uh, the uh, supposedly the uh, the Cleric Cudgel and the Cursed Cudgel, uh, 1.8 uh, and 1.4 scaling, uh, whereas the basic uh, Cudgel would be uh, 1.0 and 0.6 scaling. Um, basically removing about 30% of their initial stat overhead penetration thingy. Um, whereas, for example, if we go down to all ranged weapons, they are 1.3 times uh, strength, 1.7 times uh, dexterity, but at the same time, uh, they're um, they're ignoring 30% uh, of the uh, strength uh, on the opponent's side, but they're also multiplying their damage by 2.5, um, as well as uh, multiplying the enemy armor by 2.5. Okay, so finishers are, uh, let's see, uh, to reiterate what's been mentioned above in the affinities and elements section, finishers with an element will modify stat overhead by 100% if the finisher element is strong against the defender's affinity. Here's an example of the damage formula for flaming fists. Uh, damage equals attacker's 1.8 strength uh, plus 1.4 times dexterity minus uh, defender's 0.7 times strength uh, plus 1.0 times vit. Um, then uh, in a separate bracket, it's uh, 100 uh, plus the weapon's attack value times 1.0, and then the, the defender's equipment value times 1.0. Um, and then the action value is basically just like the uh, the initial kind of attack score that's added to each one. So if you've ever wondered why it, uh, why it is uh, that it seems to be always be adding a little under 100 uh, every time that you go and use a finisher, that's basically why. That's this action value thing going on over here, uh, meaning that stuff like Howling Rage and Retribution will almost always have at least 250. This seems to be Reborn's answer to um, uh, TP scaling moves uh, back in the PSP version, where you would basically always be able to guarantee a certain amount. Uh, this time around, it seems like um, like basically your TP scalers are what I like to, to call uh, neutral scalers, uh, where there were cases where aside from element, uh, just sometimes, like, for example, with Howling Rage, they might be able to go extremely high regardless. Uh, so either way, uh, those could be considered the old uh, TP up moves. Um, and then stuff like Retribution would be a essentially a 250, plus it's also getting multiplied by an element. Um, so either way, uh, this is also why stuff like Heart Crusher ends up going really, really, uh, really hard there, essentially getting its uh, damage more or less doubled, if I'm understanding this correctly. Um, and again, overwhelm with that neutral scaling. Um, Papillon Real, another one of those cases of just being able to really, really lean into a particular element. Um, as far as swords go, it's still weird that they have two lightning ones right next to each other, with the main difference between them being a slight difference in cost. Um, it's a pretty massive jump to Grand Cross uh, from Lightning Strike, but it's just always seemed a little bit weird to me. Um... Again, for uh, for axes, you'll notice that uh, pretty much every multi-hit move has a, a zero action value, meaning that just like uh, the One Vision mod, it is literally a zero times, uh, essentially just your basic attack multiple times. Um, again, same thing for stuff like Spiral Scourge over here. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and move on here. It's always either zero, 100, or 250, in case you're wondering. Um, except for, ooh, except for Armageddon, that literally is the best uh, neutral scaler. 300. I didn't even notice that the first time through. 
Also, apparently Demon Rose is only 70, which is kind of interesting. I mean, it makes sense for them to have a very locked-in value, I suppose. But all right, uh, let's, uh, let's keep going on here. Um, I will say, by the way, um, as far as stuff like Brimstone Hail, I feel like potentially there may be some degree of, um, of extra fudgery going on with that one. Um, because I can't help but notice in some cases, light crossbows in the hands of heavy units seem to very suddenly spike in damage in cases where they weren't even uh, really going against a particular element. Um, it just seemed like they were just suddenly spiking past armor. I'm not really sure what that was about. I'm sure there's maybe more to all of this still, but I just figured I'd go ahead and show, uh, throw that out there. Also, I'm a little bit surprised that Scattershot is actually literally just Wind Element plus a double attack. Uh, it doesn't actually have any additional value to it, which is kind of insane considering how hard it hits. Um, either way. Uh, so spells and equipment multipliers. Maybe this is what I was misunderstanding earlier. So, Attacker's Equipment Multiplier is 0, while Defender's Equipment Multiplier is 0.5. Here's an example for Deadshot. Uh, damage equals Attacker's 1.5 Intelligence, uh, plus 1.1 Mind, uh, minus the Defender's 0.7 Mind, uh, plus 1.0 Resistance. Uh, then 25 times the Elemental Compatibility Adjustments. Um, in this case, uh, since Deadshot's action value is 25, that's where that comes from. Um, and then minus the defender's uh, equipment defense uh, times uh, times half. Um, so you're literally getting half your armor value, and then also uh, vitality just completely doesn't play a part this time around. That's confirmed. Um, to break it down further, the equipment's uh, defense uh, times 0.5 part, the actual formula used is the following. Equipment defense plus unit level times 1.5 times 0.5. So they get additional level armor, but they get uh, less physical armor. So your actual level defends it more than your armor, I guess. To a certain degree, anyway. I, I can't say exactly how accurate that uh, overgeneralization is, but let's go ahead and move on. So, um, as far as tier 1s to tier 4s, uh, so direct spells are a 25 attack value, uh, tier 2s are 60, tier 3s are a 90, and tier 4s are 120. Uh, for indirects, um, if this thing decides to stop lagging for a moment, that would be absolutely wonderful. I'm not sure why it's lagging so hard here. Um, okay. So for indirects, it's uh, 40, 70, 55, 95. So the tier 2s actually do have better uh, overall penetration. Uh, so 2s and 4s, 3s are the ones where they start expanding in size a whole lot, so that kind of makes sense. Though I have to say, I've always felt like threes were doing better than twos. I'm, I'm not sure if I missed something there, but either way, uh, something to bear in mind. And then when it comes to summons, they are 100. However, they scale lower. Uh, so whereas, uh, for example, the, um, the directs were 1.5 plus 1.1, the indirects were 1.3 plus 1.0, and then the summons are 1.1 uh, plus 0.9. Apocryphos, on the other hand, um, are 1.3 plus 1.1, and then the tier 1s are 115, tier 2s are 150. However, this is another interesting bit here. So for Aeroflux, Supernova, and Heavenly Judge, as well as their count, uh, part 2 uh, counterpart, uh, the Defender's stat overhead is modified by the following. Defender's height minus 1 times 2. For Earthquake, Abyss, and Ice Requiem, and their uh, tier 2 counterpart, the Defender's stat overhead is modified by the following. 33 minus the Defender's height times 2. Essentially, what they're saying there uh, is that uh, when it comes to Apocrypha, it actually partially scales by height. Now, you remember I was saying that they did a whole bunch of really just like random dumb nonsense uh, based... Uh, Oh, and it decided to freeze. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> random dumb nonsense uh, based entirely off of uh, stuff like uh, like line of sight and whatever else uh, in um, uh, in the PSP version. Well, that's basically what we're looking at here as well, uh, where apparently uh, Apocrypha actually scales based on height. So we'll go ahead and leave you there. We'll go ahead and let uh, Sherry get her stuff uh, charged up here. So if she were to go ahead and target Earthquake right here, it would be a 209. However, if we go and we move this unit up a little bit, have her stand up here. Uh, now that number will have changed very slightly. Uh, we're now suddenly, she is, uh, actually no, she's still 209. Okay, whatever. Let's try that again with a little bit more intense of a uh, height change. Let's go ahead and drop her down here. Um, I believe with, if it's within one, it may not necessarily move that far. 
I tested this earlier. Why is it not? Okay, let's test this again. So 651, uh, if she's right there. At the same time, if she were to go to a lower tile all of a sudden, uh, then we should see... No, oh, still 651. What on earth is going on here? So this is absolutely bizarre. Because I have tested this earlier, and it was working just fine. It almost makes me wonder if it just randomly turned off for some reason. So I don't know what the hell the criteria is, but here we go. Uh, 186. Because again, I feel like there's maybe something fudgy going on in, uh, in this particular case. So 186 here. If we go back in time, we have her warp down here. Suddenly it's uh, going to be... Uh, uh, 192. So it does work. I don't know why certain elevations work and other elevations don't. Um, I, maybe it has to be a certain threshold or something. Like maybe it's only every other elevation that's counting. Um, I have no idea. Anyway, let's go ahead and actually move on to the other stuff here. Um, this is one of those mechanics that's going to be so unbelievably oddly specific that I don't know what we're really going to you know, do extra with it. But long story short, if you're lower, the earth-based stuff hits you better. If you're higher, the, uh, you know, the air and the light and the fire stuff hits you better. So that's kind of neat. Anyway, moving on. One ginormous tangent later. So healing, uh, healing spells with the exception of healing four, which uh, heals by percentage of the target's life, uses the following uh, formula to calculate how much it heals. So caster's mind times 0 0.05 plus action value. Uh, healing spells action values are different for uh, different uh, things. Com ah, sorry, for healing are different compared to the damage it deals. Uh, healing values are indicated in parentheses. If the caster's element is the same as the element of the action being taken, i.e. light, the multiplayer of mind becomes 0.15 so all right so uh, in the case of like something like heal one uh, if they're attacking with it the spell attack value would be 30 the same as like a missile spell um, but it would be 105 for healing um, in the case of uh, uh, in, if they're uh, healing, uh, they're getting an 0.15 multiplier, um, in the, and it's exclusively off of mind uh, if they're attacking it's 1.3 int and 1.0 mind um, so that's basically why you're getting almost no healing. The actual uh, value is 15% uh, of any stat point that you get, which is going to be fairly insignificant. That being said, heal 4 is apparently percentage-based this time, which is interesting. It definitely explains a lot. Um, I wonder if they state anywhere where the actual percentage for heal 4 is, because I don't think they do. Um, anyway, uh, Draconic uh, is 95 for Tier 1, 120 for Tier 2, scales the same as the other overheads. I was really hoping to see that maybe there are some other properties here, but it's literally just like, more or less, here, let's compare it with the other overheads real quick. So it's just straight up dramatically worse than Apocrypha. Um, compared to the other, other overheads, uh, it is roughly... Like, the tier 1 is equivalent to the tier 4s of the uh, the basic uh, overhead things, um, as well as uh, stronger in terms of the uh, the tier 2, which is okay. It's just that that 95 is not in as big of an area. The tier 2 draconics are in a bigger area. It's weird because it doesn't feel like it's exactly that strong. It, honestly, draconic 2 and uh, elemental 4 oftentimes feel like they're roughly the same overall value. I was really hoping to see that maybe they were going past defenses or something. That being said, they do have one extra tile of range, so that's nice. Anyway, a few other random bits and pieces for Necromancy. Life Force is a 60, so that's twice as powerful as a basic missile. Putrefy is 45. Uh, Putrefy 2 is 75. Uh, Ninjutsu is a 70 for both Tier 1s and Tier 2s, uh, with lower overall scaling. Uh, miscellaneous, uh, here's some miscellaneous information in... Oh, they do cover instills. So, in general, instill elements provide two buffs. Attuned grants resistance, 15% to its corresponding element. Uh, example, uh, fire attuned grants fire resistance. Touched grants a bonus, 25% uh, 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 second attack damage. That does not change the weapon's element type. But that being said, um, there was that secondary bit that was added in the comments, basically saying that it kind of does, though. Like, it doesn't change the weapon's element attack, but it does have its own kind of modified scaling that's sort of encapsulated within itself. So, like, that 25% goes up to, uh, I think it's like, it was like 27 to 29 something percent uh, for, uh, for one type of weakness. Uh, for another type of weakness, it would have gone up for another 2%. Basically, 31 point something, I remember being the, uh, the maximum there. 
Uh, so, elemental armors. The tooltips uh, from various uh, elemental armors are erroneous. They do not provide a bonus to damage. Uh, the tooltips were taken from the original version, which makes sense. Um, weapon skill ranks. For both physical attacks and spells, each weapon rank uh, 0.6 uh, adds a... I think that it was meant to say adds. Um, uh, each weapon rank adds 0.6 to the stat overhead values of the attacker's attributes. Uh, example, uh, i.e. the strength index or int plus mind part. This is capped at 90 ranks, uh, 54 total. Um, so there's a lot of uh, untranslated sections that are still in here. Um, but in terms of all the stuff, I will say there is that exception uh, for ninja stuff, because ninja stuff does not check skills. Um, I don't see that mentioned here. Maybe it was missed. Maybe there's some other fudgery going on there. Um, but yeah, those uh, those skills were uh, were not actually uh, uh, being checked uh, with uh, ninja stuff for whatever reason. Um, let's see. Frequently asked questions: Is it better to stack elemental affinity or compatibility? Um, that is to say, unit element is the same as their weapon or finisher. Or is it better to spread them out? I mean, I'd vote spread. It vote. It depends on what you want to achieve. Stacking affinity or uh, elemental compatibility provides a significant boost against one element, and a uh, consistent minor boost everywhere else. Spreading them out uh, gives you a significant boost against several elements as opposed to just one or more depending on the amount of finishers with elements. Like, personally, I think just splitting your weapon types between different uh, finishers is absolutely viable this time around. Uh, which inflicts a higher penalty, breach or fear? Fear in reduces the target's attributes in the stat overhead section by approximately 15%. It also applies a similar penalty to the target's def uh, to the target's defender's equipment and class value. Breach increases the attacker's attributes uh, in stat overhead by 50%. Um, so, aka just like before, all thresholds getting reduced by fear, and then breach is practically just a 50% damage multiplier. Although that is significant. Before it was like 20%, now it's 50%. That's insanity. Um, anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, I am losing my dang voice here. So, that is going to be that. Um, that is the damage formula overall. Um, I'm sure there's some stuff that I completely misunderstood. I'm sure there's some stuff that, uh, you know, I, I maybe didn't uh, translate uh, perfectly here. Um, um, I'm personally going to try to see if I can make any heads or tails of those untranslated sections, see if maybe I can uh, make some sense out of anything else that was potentially missed, especially as far as the whole ninja thing goes. Um, just to uh, go ahead and show that real quick, because I believe that I, I have that on Kashua right now, just for a bit of proof here. Uh, so we go ahead and end our turn. Actually, I probably can just go ahead and go back to Kashua's turn here. So, for example, just to prove that it, her weapon skill isn't just broken, if she were to just attack, the weapon skill would go up. Anything that she does will make the weapon skill go up, because it is currently at, like, what is it, 11? So, basically, anything should be increasing it. Um, in fact, let me just go down into the thing itself to show that it is 0.0, .0 right now. And if she were to wait for her um, her stuff to charge up, we'll be able to quickly see that uh, it does not actually charge any, or it does not actually uh, interact for some reason. Um, the reason that I know that it isn't uh, actually boosting anything is if you end up um, if you end up uh, testing them side by side, if you end up looking at the PSP version, um, if there is an interaction whatsoever, it would end up uh, getting a level up there. Uh, so in this particular case, just to show 122, if she were to go ahead and cast this here there will be no XP interaction. So nothing gained whatsoever. Um, out of curiosity, let's go ahead and uh, test one more thing here, which is if she goes ahead and, and attacks. Okay, if she goes ahead and attacks and doesn't get parried, however. <laughs> uh, what a time to parry. Okay, so she gets that rank up. So it was 122 before. Now we wait for her next turn to roll around just to uh, see if there's any movement whatsoever, because uh, per all of this other stuff, we should see at least one point going up, um, which I believe that probably should be uh, zero, because I have not noticed any increase whatsoever as far as all this stuff's concerned. Um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and apply this here, and still 122. Um, at the same time, her uh, weapon, uh, her actual uh, weapon swing has gone up. Either way, uh, this is just kind of just to throw this out there. I don't know why this is specifically exempt. If it's bugged, if it's on purpose, I don't know. They hit hard enough as it is. It kind of feels like a nice little middle ground there. 
either way, uh, that is about that. So, uh, thank you to all of y'all, uh, Translady and, uh, Data Miney folks. Um, please do correct what I, whatever I might have mixed up here. I know that there's definitely going to be some errors, um, but we're all here to try and understand this game to challenge run it better, so, <laughs> uh, let me know. I want to understand these systems. Okay, take care. So I just wanted to throw this out here as just a little bit of an extra thing, but um, in terms of um, Asphil's uh, GitHub page, he's constantly updating this stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, link it as well, because I, I a lot of this stuff is not exactly translated. Um, so this is where a lot of the original info comes from. But man, so many of these names are absolutely hilarious. Like special moves like Fire Palm, Dancing, Angry Trumpet, Disciplinary, Blade of Lightning, Heartbreaking, Sowing Shadows, Annihilation, which those ones are pretty direct, Quenching Trauma, Cherry Blossom Dance, Butterfly Dance, Flowering, uh, Flowing Water Poisonous Waves, <laughs> Sword of the Tornado, Violent Bombardment, uh, let's see, Glacier Purgatory, which... Damn, that sounds cool. Um, the Endless Caving. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Either way, if, if you want to uh, find a lot of... Uh, the Earth is Broken. <laughs> oh, this is great. I love Google Translate. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> the Thunder is Thundering. Um... <laughs> uh, Death and Revenge. So e either way, if you want to um, to get more good information, or you just want to have a laugh at uh, uh, at at some of these names, it's a hundred percent a thing. The wind is strong. <laughs> oh, beautiful! High pressure spitting. <laughs> Uh, beautiful, but no, there's um, there's a bunch of bits uh, that actually didn't get covered in the video here that. Um, like, for example, I believe they were the one that figured out the skill launch rates over here. Um, like, preempt is counteract in advance. Um, but uh, I believe they were the ones that figured this stuff out. Um, as far as growth rates, they got all that on there. As far as uh, drop tables, they got all that on there. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is hard to make heads or tails of on account of I have no idea what the hell this says. And if you, you know, Google Translate it, it just... It turns into slightly more hilarious gibberish, but, um, you know, occasionally we get an, a full translation and that suddenly it explains a lot more things. Um, so, uh, yeah, just figured I'd go ahead and throw this on here as a little bit of an other note. Um, apparently it's the river sued. Huh. Okay. Back to it then. <laughs>